Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Tan. I am the product manager for Skewbrain here at Halo. Today we're going to look at how to use Skewbrain with Brightpole. So the first thing we do is go to the Skewbrain website and click on client login. And at client login I'm just going to sign in with my username and password which is my email address. Um, I already have an account obviously. Uh, if you don't it's just easy to just click on sign up now and you can start using the free plan. Now the free plan does not include Brightpole integration, so we're going to use my plan. Uh, and then when we sign in, you have the option of creating uh, a project. If you don't have any projects, go to Project, Create, and then put in a project name here, such as Bright Pearl Demo. But since I already have a project, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm just going to go to this, which has been created. Now the first thing you'll do is you have to import some data into your project and that's where uh, the system will ask you to go to the sales dashboard and here you have a number of integrations that we've got uh, with a number of ERPs online. Uh, we're going to select Brightpool and then we need to put in our Brightpool details so uh, if you click on the question mark it'll tell you what to do. Uh, in this case I need to know what is my Brightpool account name. I'm going to use the Out to Heaven test account um, and then we'll get our login name, which would be skewbrain at brightpearl.com. And then we need to have our password, uh, which is going to be, I believe, just brightpearl. So let's just type in brightpearl. Now, to see whether I entered my details correctly, I'm going to click on validate. And it says success, out to heaven account found. So we will then save our settings. Now, once you save your settings, you'll say Brightpool is hooked up and good to go. And the only thing you have to do now, this is a sample dashboard, the only thing you have to do is just click on import from Brightpool. And when you do that, uh, the import process will start working immediately. Uh, and it says queued for import and we will email you when your jobs are complete. Now, uh, instead of waiting for this to complete, I will go to another project which already has imported data from Brightpool from that account. Uh, it's called the Brightpool demo account. And I'm just going to open that. So in the Brightpool demo account, you see that we've got sales history um, and then yes, yeah, a forecast. So interestingly, uh, where does the forecast come from? Let's have a quick look. We'll go to the sales tab again and then we'll look at the Brightpool history. So this history stretches back a couple of years. Uh, you can see that the, the, the amount of sales is trending down in this test account, uh, but that's all right. So now that we've got data from Brightpool, what we would normally do is create a forecast, and then from the forecast, we can use it to drive a replenishment plan. So let's click on the forecast tab. Uh, I already have a forecast here. I'll come back to that forecast. But the way you would create a forecast is very, very simple. Uh, you just click on a new forecast and go uh, forecast for May and the forecast interval is June. There are a number of possibilities. Um, monthly is usually good for retailers uh, and then forecast starting point is today. So the forecast is going to go from today all the way through for 12 months and then I'm just going to go generate a forecast. And now Skewbrain is calculating um, the forecast for every SKU in the system that has been imported over from Brightpool. Uh, and this process will take uh, approximately five to ten minutes. So we we're not going to wait for this to end. Uh, when it finishes, uh, what you will see is the results of the forecast. So we're going to go back to the forecast screen and look at the earlier forecast that was created. So we can see that we have a forecast for May and it's processing, but we had an earlier forecast which we had done, so we're going to look at that. So we can go and have a look at the forecast. And here you have a forecast from the 1st of May to the 1st uh, of 2017 to the 1st of May of 2018. So it's a 12 months forecast. Uh, and while that's loading, we can have a look at the sequence, the, um, the hierarchy of your forecasts, as it were. So what we've done here is that uh, we have a hierarchy, uh, which you can set. And the hierarchy goes from all sales, which is a cumulative um, sales for everything. Uh, and then under that, you have the brands, and then the outlook, and then the skew. So we call this a three hierarchy forecast. It's got brand, outlet, and skew. So if you look at this uh, navigator, the tree navigator on the left, you'll see they have brands. For example, Adidas is a brand. And if you expand Adidas, you'll see the outlets where Adidas is being sold, Amazon FBA, Main Warehouse, etc. 
and under each of those you see the SKUs which are sold there. So uh, that's the hierarchy for this forecast. At the all sales level you can see that there is a pretty good, uh, there's a, an aggregate graph of all the sales and over in the right hand side where there is the white background you'll see a 12 month forecast. So overall by just having a quick look at that you can see that based on the uh, declining sales over the last three years the sales for the next 12 months isn't forecast to be very, very good. Now let's have a quick look and drill into the forecast. We could, for example, have a look at all the sales for Adidas. Here are the sales for Adidas. This looks promising. The sales for Adidas tend to have a spike uh, approximately every 12 months, except perhaps in May 2015, uh, where there wasn't one. Uh, based on the history, Skewerbin has projected that there will be a spike as well uh, for their forecast in 2017. Uh, but that will only occur in the, in the month of December and every other month is pretty much going to be low. So this is a forecast for all of Adidas. If you look at the warehouses underneath of Adidas, we could actually just go, let's have a look at the breakdown. And here's the breakdown. So the breakdown here is that main warehouse pretty much has all the sales and all the other warehouses will not have any of the sales. So we can look at main warehouse, drill down uh, and have a look at there. So let's switch it back from the breakdown to the total. Right, so here we have uh, the main warehouse having sales, 20,000 approximately at a particular time in the year, and this projected to be, uh, the actual projection for that is this line here, which is 119 in December. So that's the forecast that Skewbrain has created. Now Skewbrain creates its forecasts based on um, a number of different algorithms. They're all automatically applied to the data. Uh, this includes time series algorithms such as ARIMA and uh, ETS, Exponential Time Series. Uh, it also includes some of the um, lesser known ones such as Croston's method for intermittent sales uh, and a lot more. So for a full breakdown of all the algorithms we use, you can go and look at the Skewbrain website. Uh, but the important thing is that this uh, forecast has been created for you by the system with uh, almost no input. You can, you can tell that uh, somebody without any forecasting or statistical knowledge can create high quality forecasts based on historical information from sales, which is aggregated across all your sales, broken down by whatever hierarchy you like, for example, a brand outlet or SKU hierarchy, and then you can drill down and analyze this. Now, if Scribbin were just to stop here, this would still be extremely valuable for anybody because the ability just to break down your sales over time and look at the projected 12 months ahead uh, is, is very, very powerful. Indeed, uh, Skewbrain also supports adjustments of forecasts. So for example, let's say that you have Adidas and you know that you're going to make a promotion for Adidas in the future. What you could say is that I'm going to uh, adjust forecasts uh, and say that because I know that in, uh, let's say in August, I'm going to make a, a, a promotion for Adidas, I expect that Adidas is going to increase by uh, 100 units. Uh, and then we'll say uh, Adidas promotion in August. And we'll just go apply. And what that has done is that has increased or that will increase the forecast for Adidas for July, sorry, for August. Uh, and it will also break down that forecast uh, across all the different warehouses uh, and outlets and then across all the SKUs underneath that outlet as well. So we'll just wait for that finish. And there you go. So you can see that um, the amount of forecast sales for August has been increased. And if you drill down into each of the warehouses or the outlets underneath that, you will see that each of them have an increase in um, August as well. The, it's not so evident for main warehouse simply because um, the other forecasts are so high uh, at the two and a half thousand level, so you can't really see it. But uh, maybe at Amazon it will be clearer. Amazon nothing. Well, this is actually a good example. If nothing was forecast uh, at the Amazon level, even if you increase it at the Adidas level, there's unlikely to be any sales. So Scribbin has intelligently decided that. Uh, the, none of the sales should be allocated to Amazon because it has never had any sales. Um, Manchester is the same, North Depot is the same, Oldham, South Blackpool, let's see where did it put, here we go, this is an interesting one, South Bolton. 
So Skirbin has allocated um, 14 items to South um, Black South Bolton based on uh, one historical event. Uh, I'm sure there will be at least another outlet where Skirbin has allocated some sales. Uh, here's one. Uh, here's another one, which is uh, South March 2015. So it's allocated uh, 75 of those sales to South March 2015, uh, and so on. So you can see there's been an adjustment. Um, if we switch to the the quantity view, and then we'll look at the breakdown, we'll be able to tell that the adjustment was allocated downwards to a number of different SKUs. Here we see other and hoodie orange. So you can see a number of SKUs. So if I click on one of them, you can see that there will be an adjustment of the SKU uh, upwards by the amount um, that was adjusted at the Amazon, at the Adidas level. So that's how adjustments work. And there are a number of other things that you can do with adjustments. Uh, of course, you can, um, let's close this up. We can also adjust uh, by percent across the board, by units across the board, uh, absolute values. You can even copy forecasts from one place to another. This will help with new product line forecasting, for example. Uh, however, we won't go into that right now. Let's go and have a look at our forecasts. All right, now that we have two forecasts, the next thing we want to do is to create a replenishment plan. So we'll go and have a look at replenishment plans. We already have a couple of them. Uh, let's create a new one. So when we create a replenishment plan, uh, first of all, we have to choose our brands. So in this case, let me pick Adidas again and go confirm. Now we've uh, previously mapped supplier mappings to this particular brand. We can have a look at that. Uh, so everybody is mapped from brand Adidas to the supplier Adidas. We can have a look at all the different outlets. They all have Adidas as a supplier. So let's just go next. And now we have to create a plan. Now the plan uh, is obviously going to be driven by two key things. One is going to be a forecast of the future sales. So in this case, we'll pick forecast for May. And a default outlet, we're not going to select a default outlet uh, so that the uh, units will be allocated to all the different outlets where the sales have occurred. So we're going to click on next. And here we are asked to supply the uh, particular suppliers that we want to place orders with. Now, uh, the orders are not placed automatically. Uh, we have a chance to review the plan before placing an order. So we'll just pick Adidas since that's the only supplier that we have got configured. So we'll just go on next. Now, here we have an order cycle. And the order cycle is just how often you place orders. Uh, this matters because if your order cycle is 30 days, uh, then the forecast for 30 days is used um, to determine how much to buy. Because you don't want to buy um, so much uh, and hold stock when the demand in the next 30 days is not going to be that high. So the order cycle is important in determining how much SKUBrain tells you to buy. Uh, so we'll say order cycle 30 days, and then uh, how, what is the uh, lead time for each supplier? So let's say when you place an order with Adidas supplies, you get it in seven days. So we'll put seven days there, and then we create a plan. So the plan will uh, query Brightpool to see how many uh, units of inventory are available for all the SKUs that we've chosen. In this case, we've chosen the Adidas SKUs. And then it will create the replenishment plan based on forecast demand. Now, um, we're not going to wait for this to happen. We'll just have a look at what the outcome would be. So we'll go back to replenishment and look at an earlier plan that we had created. So let's pick this one here, ERP replenishment. OK. So let's see what this screen tells us. Now, um, <clears throat> overall, it says that we have um, pretty much the right amount of SKUs across all our inventory. Uh, there are some which are overstocked and there are some to replenish. So the number to replenish is actually only two uh, and we'll try and understand what this means here. So you have three tabs, replenish, overstock and hold. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll look at the replenishment first. So this is for Adidas. Let's just make that clear. Um, 
what is the lead time in this case and also let's select the brand where's the brand there you go right so this is for edit us <clears throat> so in this case what we've done is um, skewbrain forecasts that at the end of the lead time the forecasted number of units you have is going to be zero but you're going to sell um, some so this uh, can be rounded up to one because obviously it doesn't make sense to sell 0.19 units um, so screwbrain replenishes is up to one this will be uh, the decimal place is um, it, it only comes up strange when you have very few numbers but uh, when you're talking about hundreds uh, or thousands then the decimal place really doesn't matter in this case however screwbrain has said that um, you have zero available in the next uh, order cycle days uh, but you're going to need at least one so you need to buy one of them and the same for the other one um, you have zero available uh, you're going to need more than zero so you need to buy at least one now um, we will have a look at overstock as well overstock are all the stock items which Scribbin thinks that you have too many of in this case we have created a plan uh, which says that we will warn if the stock exceeds 200 percent of requirements so if you have more than 200% of what you expected to sell in the next 30 days, Scubin will warn you. So in this case, for example, um, this particular item, shirt ads, right? We have 100 available. We're not going to sell any in the next uh, lead days, which is seven days. Uh, so we're going to have 100 available, but we're not going to sell any either uh, in the next 30 days. So you are 100% overstock. Sorry, sorry, you're 100 units overstock, which is more than 200%. And it goes through all the SKUs and creates this plan for you. So it tells you what are the overstocked uh, SKUs. And of course, the SKUs that you have uh, enough of, or um, at least enough to meet the demand. So a lot of the SKUs you can see have actually no inventory, but they also have no demand. So SKUbrain just leaves them and you don't need to do anything with them, which appears to be the majority of the case. So that is a replenishment plan. Um, Let's have a look at, okay, so both of them has finished. All right, that's good. So with a replenishment plan, um, when you want to place an order based on the replenishment plan, uh, you can just go create purchase order. And what SKUbrain then will do is that for every SKU which we need to replenish, SKUbrain will create a draft purchase order in Brightpool for the amount, the number of SKUs uh, created as well as uh, against the supplier that you've <clears throat> selected. So here we are creating purchase orders. And um, what we'll probably do is uh, log in to Brightpool and have a look at those purchase orders. So let's have a look at that. So let's go and find the purchase orders. And then under the purchase orders, we can look at draft purchase orders uh, for Outer Heaven. And here we go. On the 2nd of June, we have one purchase order for Adidas. Um, and in this case, it's for the three items mentioned uh, in the replenishment plan. So that just about sums up Skewbrain. Um, to reiterate, the, pro the process uh, is, is pretty much, first you create your project, then you import your data, then you create a forecast, and finally you create a replenishment plan and push, push purchase orders back into Skewbrain. Now this is just a very quick primer. Uh, there are lots of other things that Skewbrain can do, but um, we'll stop here for today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.